Okay, we're going to tie a fly that I've been tying for, shoot, probably 10 years now. Uh, one time on a business trip, I was up in Washington, and I stopped by a little shop in Woodenville, Washington, called Swede's Fly Shop, and asked them what their local pattern was, and, and he, uh, they, they showed me this fly. It's called the Olive Willie, and I think that their shop's since moved to Spokane, uh, but anyway this this pattern has accounted for lots and lots of fish for me uh, at one point I held the catch and release state record for smallmouth bass using this fly and a fly rod it was I think it was 21 and a quarter inches uh, but anyway this fly is super simple doesn't use a lot of materials and there are also some variations you can do with it so what I've done is I've, I've got a size 8 Allen S402 hook in the vise um, and then I have just like a little craft bead on it. These are the kinds of beads that have the square hole and the hole is like painted silver or something. Anyway, you got to debarb the hook to get these beads to slide up onto it. So I'm just going to take some UTC 70 in red and just dress my hook. So the one that I, I used to tie or the, the way I used to tie it is with the pheasant rump. And so the pheasant rump uh, is kind of a grayish color bird. And so if you're using pheasant rump, you use dyed chartreuse. And that dyed chartreuse color mixes with the natural colors and creates a nice olive. But now that we've got these really high quality uh, whiting Coque de Leon saddles, um, Coque de Leon hen saddles, I should say, this is like the ultimate material for tying these olive willies. So what I've done is I've, I've plucked out a feather. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this feather and the bottom part of the feather I'm going to use for the tail. Uh, I'm going to use a, bot, a chenille body and then I'm going to wrap the, the head with this feather as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just some of these fibers and just pull them off the stem. You're going to tie that in right at the back. And if you want a bushier tail, you can grab another clump. I think this will be fine. And then uh, the original pattern also just calls for normal olive chenille. And I found that if you kind of kick it up a notch a little bit and use some like speckled chenille, uh, we have this new speckled uh, lime olive chenille in our store that uh, really matches up well with this pattern. So I've just peeled some of the chenille off. I'll tie it in and wrap it forward. So I'm going to wrap it forward and leave a little bit of space behind the eye so that I can tie that soft hackle in. So here's the feather. I'm going to clean off the rest of that uh, base fluff before I tie it in. And that's one of the keys with this is with the, with the pheasant, the, the stems are pretty brittle. So it was always hard to get it that peeled off with the pheasant. So I've done this with my feather. And right here where this notch is, that's where I'm going to tie in this feather onto the hook. Now, you could kind of preen all these fibers back and make them lay down really nice right from the get-go. But really, I'm just going to wrap those forward and use a couple layers of thread at the head to kind of push the fibers back. You can preen them back a little bit as you wrap too.
So it's really important up here by the head to use really minimal wraps. Um, that way you can uh, make a really small head. But you know if you if you have a little bit of thread build up behind the bead, that's not a problem. So this is one version of the fly that that I was shown when I was in the shop. So essentially, all you would do is whip finish. You've got an olive willy. That's that's the one that some of those guys fish. Um, but the ones that I usually tie have an added element. So I'm I'm going to take just some red rabbit. I just have a big clump of a patch of red rabbit for you can get red zonker strips. You could even do this with marabou if you wanted. And I'm going to cut just a tiny piece off. So I've got a, a clump of rabbit and I'm just going to take the the guard hairs and just pull some of those out as best I can. And so I'm going to just lay this on top of the fly and the, the wing the overwing of this rabbit should extend about to where the soft hackles end. So I'm going to measure that and I'm going to pre-trim it before I tie it in to kind of uh, help with some bulk at the front. So here I've trimmed the butt ends. I'm just going to lay that down, kind of make a loose wrap. And there will be a little bit of thread build up on this one because you've got to cinch in that uh, that rabbit. All right, that's basically it. The olive willy. Uh, some people say it fishes best, you know, right in the early summer where you're going to be fishing you know damsel flies but really I fish this fly whenever there's open water on still waters and lakes and uh, you know some guys will even throw it in rivers swing it um, but anyway really good pattern I've also modified it to uh, be black to be tan but really the olive one is the the best producer for us